In this video, we're gonna talk about state hoisting and we're gonna use it in our project to improve the code base. Generally speaking, state hoisting and the things that I'm gonna sh show you in this video, the things that they really bring to the table are they improve reusability of code, so you can reuse composables in this context. Uh, they promote unidirectional data flow, so the flow, whoops, <laughs> the flow of data in one direction, which is always a good idea because if there's a one-way street, it's easier to debug than having you know branches branching off into all kinds of different directions directions and it also makes testing easier. Now I personally haven't tried out the testing with Jetpack Compose yet but I expect to start trying that out in the next course when we do the database caching. So we'll really put this to the test and we'll see if state hoisting does make testing easier. I'm assuming it's pretty much the same thing as you know dependency injection the same way that dependency injection makes testing easier because it forces you to you know put all of the arguments and the the things that you need into the function or the class before you use it. So it makes it easier that way. So anyway, that's enough talking. Let's go uh, quickly look at a definition of like what state hoisting is, where they talk about it in the documentation, and then we're going to apply it to our code and improve it. So if you go to the Jetpack Compose documentation, uh, by the way, if you don't know where this is, usually I just go, you know, Jetpack Compose, um, you could do state or I don't know, if you just search Jetpack Compose, it should take you there. But if you want to search something specific, it's usually easier. You can just search, search uh, state uh, hoisting, so state hoisting. So Jetpack Compose state hoisting, probably going to be the first link that comes up here. And you have all of these different uh, options here for the different docs, layout, theming, managing state, testing, interoperability, navigation, or column for Compose. We want to go to the managing state section. So there's a lot of stuff here, as you can see from the table of contents on the right, but we want to go to where we see state hoisting. So I'm just going to search for the keyword hoisting and come down here and I'll read this out to you guys. So a stateless composable is a composable that cannot change any state itself, okay? Stateless composables are easier to test, tend to have fewer bugs, and open up more opportunities for reuse. All right, so that's pretty much what I said at the beginning of the video. If your composable has state, you can make it stateless by using state hoisting. So this idea of having state in a composable, that means like if we go to our, we go to our code here, having state in a composable would be like, uh, let's go down to where I have that scroll state. So I would say that this composable has state because I'm using remember scroll state. It's maintaining some individual state. Also up at the top here, we have a bunch of sort of stateful variables. These are all mutable state values that are inside of our view model. We would say that these are, you know, stateful things. That would, make, that would make this composable stateful. So th this idea of state hoisting will be to, the goal of this is to abstract out composables, like we would, we're gonna abstract out this, this search view toolbar that we have at the top. We're gonna abstract this out and pass, and all of the values that it uses, all the stateful values, uh, up above, so we pass them as arguments to the composable. So I'm sure that sounded confusing. I said a lot of things there, so let's just do it. I think really the best way is just just see with an example. So uh, let's, so like I said, we're gonna take the surface out. So clicking on this bracket so I can find the bottom of it, going all the way down here. So it's just above our lazy column. I'm gonna copy, or so I'm gonna cut out this surface. So pressing Control X on that, it's now gone. See you later surface. Now I'm gonna go into project, go into components, right click and create a new Kotlin file and call this Kotlin file search app bar. So clicking enter on that and creating that new file. So this will be a composable, like I said. So we need to annotate this with at composable. Now do function search app bar. And for now I'll leave the arguments all empty because we're gonna add those kind of as we go. So opening this up, I'm gonna give you lots of room to give you a better view. And now I want to paste in that surface. So pasting in that surface that we cut out from the recipe list fragment. So now we're gonna have a bunch of red stuff here. You know, you know we don't know what the query is. We don't know what the view model is. Um, a bunch of, bunch of stuff in here. So essentially everything that you see red here, we want to pass as a argument to the function. So the first one here is the query. Well, what is the query? The query is a string. So I would say query string. There we go. One of, the, one of the problems are solved, that, that is no longer read. The next thing here is on query changed. So this is a function. This is a function that accepts a string. So that's gonna be the next function argument up here. So I'm gonna do on query changed, and this will be a function, and a function that accepts a string, and it returns nothing. So there we go, on query changed, and now I can change this just to call on query changed. Uh, next step, or a step in the right direction. Now coming down, what's the next one? Well, new search. This is just a function that takes no arguments. So let's go up to the top and add this one. 
So just do, you know, new search or let's call it execute search. Let's call it on execute search and it will take no arguments and it will return nothing. So now let's go down here and let's call that function. So on execute search and make sure to invoke that. Next coming on down is category scroll position. So this is a variable. This is a value that we need to access. So this is a float value. So let's come to the top and add that one next. So this will be uh, the scroll position. We'll just call it, I guess. So scroll position, it will be a float. And then come copy that, come down, and replace that float value right here. So now we need the selected category. So this is going to be a string. So let's go up to the top, add that selected category. So selected category, this will be a string. And come down here. And I think that one should already be good. Oh, this is... Um, what are we comparing to it? We're comparing a string and a food category here. So instead I'll change that to a food category then. So this will, will be a food food category. And also this is nullable. It is possible that this is null. That means that nothing would be selected. Next is a function for changing the selected category. So this is a function that accepts a string. You can see up here that this, this it value is a string. So we need a function called on selected category changed and it's going to accept a string. So on selected category changed, it will be a function and that function will take a string and it will return nothing. All right, now coming down here and we can now delete this view model. There we go. Now the next function will be on, cate on change category scroll position. So this takes a float value as input. So copying that, coming up here, we'll say on change category scroll position. This will be a function that accepts a float and it will return nothing, so unit. Next coming down, we can delete the view model because now we have a way to call that function. Now the last one here is on execute search. So this is this one we've already built. So essentially I just need to open this up and say on execute search and then invoke that function and tab all this in to kind of clean it up. Well, that's weird. Why is this, uh, why is this over here? I don't know, that's weird. This should, be, this should be tabbed over here. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Anyway, who cares? I'm gonna leave it. So now we have our search app bar and you would say that we've applied state hoisting to this composable because now this composable can stand alone. We can reuse it, we can do whatever. It has everything that it needs being passed as an argument to the composable itself and we can just add it to something. So I can come into our recipe list fragments and I can say, you know, search app bar and now I can pass all of the parameters that it takes to make this thing function correctly. So I'm gonna clean this up because man, that looks ugly. Let's get all these on their own individual line and uh, now let's add the values for this so this one is the query obviously we've already got that defined and you could you know you could obviously just take this and put it here if you wanted to i prefer to just my personal opinion i like to keep all the mutable state values at the top declare them at the top and then use them accordingly wherever they need to be used that way it's just easy to keep track of you know the mutable state values i don't know just something i personally like to do so now on query changed, we can do view model and use a higher order function. This is a Kotlin higher order function and delegate that to the on query changed function inside of the view model. On execute search, we're gonna do the same thing. So view model and then new search. So calling that new search function. Again, we're using a higher order function to delegate that to the function inside of the view model. Here we want to, whoops, we want to get the scroll position. So this one will be view, view model dot category scroll position. Now the selected category. So this one should be just the selected category value up here, that mutable state value. So now on selected category changed, this is another one that we can delegate to the view model. So on selected category changed. Now on change uh, category scroll position. So view model, view model on change category scroll position. And that's it. Now we've applied state hoisting to our recipe list fragment. We've, you know, hoisted up all of the things that that contain state and abstracted it out of this composable and then built, you know, an, another composable that can now be reused. So generally speaking, this is, you know, always a good idea to do improves testability, uh, you know, unidirectional data flow, which arguably plays into the testability, making testability easier. And what was the third thing that it does? Makes uh, makes them reusable, right? Because you're abstracting out into composables that can then be reused easily and just generally cleans things up. Like if you look at the code before this video and you look at the code after this video, much cleaner. It's very easy to see, okay, there's the search bar. 
down below the search bar is the list of uh, recipes. As always, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave your engagement. You guys have been leaving some pretty funny engagement. You know, I should actually put together like a highlight reel of the ones that I think are the funniest because some of you are coming up with some pretty funny stuff. One guy actually in particular, he seems to come up with a new engagement thing for every single video. So I think there's, you know, I don't know, 17 or 18 videos by now, or no, there's more. I think there's over 20. And he's had a different engagement thing for every single video that I always laugh whenever I read them. Anyway, leave a like, leave some engagement, and I'll see you guys in the next video.